to nine at nine. All right, number nine. Uh, is Paul correct that horses are lazy? Look at this one. Sugar doesn't like to be ridden. If Sugar's approached with a saddle, she'll lie down and pretend to be asleep. She huh. won't open her eyes even until the riders leave her alone. This is what her owners claim on Twitter. Uh, some people aren't buying it. They think this photo's fake. These are all... Well, is she lazy or is she smart? Savvy. I call it savvy. You don't... The freeloader is what yeah. she is. Oh. <laughs> now you're going to put the... You not Paul? doing anything? Well, I'm, I'm just, uh, listen, I'm not in the same camp as Paul that all horses are lazy. Uh, yeah. But this particular horse would seem to be very lazy. Savvy. Yeah. Uh, number eight, listen, who needs a hotel room when you can stay in a luxury glamping bubble? It's a clear, see-through structure complete with beds, bathrooms, and spectacular views. You can stay in a bubble and sleep amongst the elephants in Thailand or fall asleep on a white sandy beach in the Maldives. Anything goes. Nice. At last check, the Maldives bubble was going for 800 bucks a night in July. Wow. Huh. Hmm. All right, number seven, there's really no such thing as a bad hot dog, but Consumer Reports just highlighted what they say are the best uh, note, this didn't seem to be a taste test, and Chicago's Vienna beef didn't seem to be one they tried. The writers say the best hot dogs are uh, Nathan's, Nathan's famous skinless beef franks. They thought that it had the best flavor that you could taste even with all sorts of toppings. The other one at the top of their list is mm -hmm. Hebrew National Beef yeah, Franks. Those are good. It's a little yeah. longer and thinner than Nathan's. One guy thought it tasted like childhood. Huh. <laughs> uh, I guess that right. depends on your childhood. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right. This is the supermarket hot dog. They say you should not get ballpark classic Franks. Uh, they said it's fine, but it's just kind of bland. And if you're at the store, why not get something better? Huh. Huh. Nationals are red. Mm -hmm. Number six, it's mosquito season. Does everyone recognize what this is? Oh, yeah. I've never seen this. This is an X that some people swear relieves the itching from a mosquito bite. You've never heard this? No. Never. Really? You put really your fingernail in and you make a little X? No. no. With, with, with what? With your fingernail. With your fingernail? Or that's is what I think. basis in science? It's huh. hard to say. Some people think it spreads the toxins under the skin, <laughs> but because itching is one of the most powerful skin sensations, most doctors say the pressure sensation or the pain of pushing your fingernail into your skin overrides the itch. Oh, there you go. The psyche. So, but it only lasts for a few minutes. Uh, so you do that right on top of the bite, right on the... Yeah, yeah. on the bite. Just dig your nail right in there. Yeah. Huh. Hmm. You could also take a hammer and smack yourself in the head, which would also... <laughs> which would also distract be effective. You. Distract you Potentially more effective. Too. And would last longer than a few minutes. Just a thought. <laughs> all right, number five. Uh, they put a camera up on this remote trail in Far East Russia, all the way down by South Korea. Look at how it captures the incredible variety of wildlife that stops by just this one spot. Eight different types of species we'll see wandering by at different times. So they set this aside to protect a rare leopard whose population has dipped to 30. Oh boy. That's a squirrel, right? <laughs> I mean, it's a rare oh, squirrel. Oh, that's though. unfortunate. <laughs> Is that a bear? <laughs> just um, it's a squirrel. Wow. <laughs> yeah, we're getting better. Boy. We're getting we're we're climbing up Look the. Look uh, Now, if you had that tiger and the bear there at the same time, then we got ourselves yeah. a party. Wow. Oh, is that the? Uh, Might be the leopard. The uh, rare leopard. <laughs> That's fun. Uh, you watch this all day. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's real audio, by the way, from this. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. Well, fortunately, we only have an hour in the show, so yeah. we'll probably move along. Uh, number four, the Scandinavian sleep method just might save your relationship. With this system, you still share a bed with your spouse, but each of you gets your own blanket. That's actually pretty genius. I like it. A you, lot. you forget about the top sheet altogether. According to a study, sharing a blanket can result in 30% more interrupted sleep. Due to all of that tossing and turning, it's especially difficult if one of you sleeps hot 
and the other one of you sleeps cold. In some cases, couples choose to put two single beds together so they each can have their own mattress. The Scandinavian method is popular in Denmark, Norway, Sweden, and other parts of Europe. And those are traditionally always ranked as some of the happiest yeah. well, countries go. in the world, aren't they? Huh. Yeah, I do the alligator roll. You tuck it in and then you go like this and you get more of the blanket. Huh. More of the comforter? <laughs> no, no one else Boy, does that. Boy, that doesn't seem very thoughtful. <laughs> or <laughs> yeah. 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 Mr. Jiggets is really not. Mr. Jiggets. Yeah. That really was getting shortchanged <laughs> there. <laughs> wow. I just wanted to leave you hanging because you left me hanging with the mosquito bite thing. I know. So I wanted true. to well, let you sit with that. It's called the alligator roll. I suggested if you guys can't get the, one Boy. of those sleeping bags. Huh. It, it works, I promise. Poor guy. Nice to get a little peek into the Jiggets home. Yeah. Because it always seems it's like everything's rainbows with the Jiggets, no, but straight. I don't think there's so. Some, no, there's some evil lurking yeah. underneath there. Oh, believe no, me. It's all, it's all positive and mm -hmm. Mr. Chicken. Rainbows <laughs> and unicorns and my dad's at home right now thinking, what the hell are you talking about? What the heck are you talking about? Number three, in 1989 in Germany, in the middle of some crop fields, a pilot named Heinz Kalbach set the Guinness record for landing a long haul jet on the shortest grass runway. But there are no passengers on board. This dangerous maneuver was all done to honor a German aviation pioneer from the 1890s, Otto Lilienthal, created gliding planes and died in this area. So the flight is kind of a, a gift to his legacy and his family. The plane landed and it just stayed there. They made it the centerpiece of a grounds and flight museum. Huh. Let's, let's take a look at the video here. Uh, look at that. Oh, all right. Number two, here's a free ad for Taco Bell, but this is a gutsy concept. They call it the Taco Bell Defy, and it's in a suburb of Minneapolis. It has four drive throughs and all the food is made on the second floor in this warehouse, which looks like a DMV or something. And they shoot the food down to you on a tiny elevator. This There's the no bank. human inter interaction whatsoever. It almost reminds you of one of the banks when they used to do the... Um, they still do in some spots, don't they? Oh, yeah. yeah. Huh. Read it. Yo it's an experience. Taco Bell. Yeah. It's an experience. It is Morgan. Number one, in 1966, the BBC show called Tomorrow's World asked high school students to predict what life will be like for them in the year 2000. These kids are eighth grade and older. Not hard to tell if they're uh, optimistic, and I think the girl was wrong about the cabbage pill. Let's check it out. Well, in the year 2000, um, I think I'll probably be in a spaceship to the moon dictating robots to robots, or else I may be, I don't know, having a, in charge of a robot court, judging some robots. God, I don't like the idea of sort of getting out and finding you've got a cabbage pill to eat for breakfast or something. <laughs> some mad will get the atomic bomb and um, just blow the world into oblivion. There's nothing you can do to stop it. The more it's people more get bombs, the more well, somebody's going to use it one day. Well, I think that it'll be so, it'll be so overpopulated that there'll all be wars, all the nuclear explosions and everything. Wow, what an the optimistic Earth group of kids. Yeah. It'll become too hot to live on. I think that there'll be no life at all, really, on, on the Earth. Ah. I don't think it's going to be so nice. Where are they now? Sort of all machines everywhere. Everyone doing everything for you. They're the ones who created these boring. problems. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it'll be so nice. Fun at parties, these kids. Be really yeah. Boring. What year was wow. this? Wow, 66. Will be the same. I mean, people will so be the same. And things are good. They're a good 14 years old. 70 or 70. Yeah. yeah. Computers yeah. are taking over now. Computers and automation. Are they all British? Is that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Also, well, that explains a lot. There just won't, won't be enough yeah. jobs to go around, and the only jobs they're going to be Yeah, I mean, the food's bad. Yeah. High they're high always high upset. High it's always high cloudy. High cloudy. It's always cloudy. All computers and... Yeah, and that's why yeah, yeah. the old U.S. of A is number one. Yep. Optimism. <laughs> Talk about an optimistic group of people, huh? Yeah, that was uplifting, I <laughs> think. <laughs> Boy, that made me feel a little bit better about ourselves. Give me 